Hi, I'm Frank Salive, and I'm the voice you'll hear when you come to the races at Ocean Downs. Frank Salive is one of the most recognizable race callers in harness racing history. Follows five back just in behind Southland legend and Jimmy Andrew. Nicknamed the Velvet Fog, his smooth, legendary voice has entertained, informed, and educated fans for decades. Although the Canadian native has attempted to retire on a few occasions, the beautiful sound of hoofbeats thundering down the track continues to pull him back in and up to the announcer's booth. Presently, he's right here at Ocean Downs. So let's get to know this star in the standard bread sport in this edition of Welcome to My World. My background was that of a super fan. And I think that's really what defines the announcers, is that we are really people who started as super fans and have just been allowed a little bit closer access to the game. So uh, my first recollections of going to harness racing were around the turn of the decade in 1970 when Stanley Dancer brought Albatross to town and Joe O'Brien brought Fresh Yankee to town. And those were huge events, of course, that long predates the internet and even off-track betting. But those were big thrills to see those horses, the greatest of their era, at such a young age. In the 1970s, I was a keen, eager, young reporter, and I wanted to pile up as much experience on everything as quickly as possible. So by age 21, I went to the 1976 Olympics in Montreal and worked on network radio and television at 21 years of age very fortunate to have done that shortly thereafter i'd been a fan of harness racing for many years and i stepped up to try to do the play-by-play -play tracks in the detroit area and i couldn't immediately master it like i had with the mainstream sports like hockey baseball basketball football golf and it took me a while and uh, lo and behold it really really caught my fancy and i really loved it when i caught on to it and uh, I was very fortunate that in 1990 it became my full-time living. I have been so fortunate to go seamlessly from the three careers I've had. Uh, in my late teens, I was groomed to be a professional hockey goalie. And in fact, in the summer of 75, I was a 10th round NHL draft choice of the Pittsburgh Penguins, as the record would show. Uh, but I was a little on the small side. I wasn't quite good enough to play in the NHL. I was prone to a lot of injuries and had my jaw broken. Shoulders needed wiring, tendonitis in both knees, all of those sorts of things that goalies get. So I made a seamless transition into uh, broadcasting and the news and sports business. And like I said, uh, after a great exposure between about 1975 to 1990 in mainstream broadcasting in and around the Detroit area, uh, I made the move full time to harness racing at what was then the Woodbine and Mohawk Circuit of Toronto. And uh, I, I was so fortunate to be the right guy in the right place at that time. Because around the turn of the millennium, there had been uh, an explosion of off-track betting, and then the internet came uh, just about 22, 23 years ago. So racing suddenly became a nightly live worldwide broadcast and that's how, just for being the right guy in the right place at the right time, I suddenly had a nightly worldwide exposure and rode the wave from those events. Well, full-time, my big career that most people would know me from was the 16 years I had at the Toronto Circuit, which is now centralized at Mohawk Racetrack. In the 1990s, had the circuit at Greenwood and Mohawk Racetracks, and then Woodbine and Mohawk, and finally centralized at Mohawk Racetrack in Ontario in recent years. I've probably guest announced at close to 75 racetracks, and I also had the privilege to work at two full-time in the United States. Uh, from 2009 to 2012, I had a wonderful stint in Florida at Pompano Park, which sadly has since closed forever. Very hard to uh, you know, come to grips with that, a lot of us who were at Pompano in those years or any time visited there, were really, really sad to see that happen. And uh, then um, after I tried retirement unsuccessfully a third time, I made another comeback to here at Ocean Downs. And uh, I must say from my first year observations being here, 
I really love it. Uh, here at uh, Ocean City and in Maryland, and seeing the talent and dedication of the horse people here, it's really, really great to be their spokesman and advocate as their nightly announcer. And uh, you know, it's only uh, about a 13 week meet, but it's wonderful to be here for the prime of the summer months. It's a real true summer resort feeling because a lot of people come from being at the beach at Ocean City and area, and then come to the racetrack and casino at night. And it's a different dynamic than I've ever experienced before, but it's a world of fun. And uh, it's a, a really better show racing wise than I expected, honestly. It's a tight, tough, exciting, uh, really, really well put together program here at Ocean Downs. Really great harness racing to be a part of. The uh, modern day announcer has had you know, some advantages that prior to the turn of the millennium, the announcers did not have, and that is the arrival of the computer era. So you can go online and see the entries four or five days ahead of time after your race office has conducted the draw for post positions and taken the entries. And then you can review replays and um, you start your day by arriving at the track several hours early, meet with the TV director, kibitz a little bit with the TV crew and keep things loose and happy and fun and uh, get ready for the night's races. And I will say this too, that it's really important to uh, be integrated into the TV production. So except for the call of the live race, I'm matching the video on the TV monitors. And the only time I really look out on the track is to match the post parade on the video monitor and then exclusively onto the track for the live race call. And they're often pacing with... But otherwise, with such an explosion of television and off-track betting in the internet, you can't cross script. You must match what the TV image is showing. In summary, why it's so important to really bear down and give the full field call of every race is that uh, with off-track betting in the internet, there is a patron or a fan or a breeder or an owner or somebody somewhere that cares about every horse in every race. So the formula to try to give fair and equal treatment as far as humanly possible is to do the full field in the first, second and third quarters, the contenders to win in the last quarter, and then if at all possible, the trifecta or superfecta finishers at the finish. Beauty Bling, you got fives on top of the ticket. Head to the cashier's line for Beauty Bling. Probably the most emotional race I ever called. The 2003 North America Cup, a race for a million dollars. Three-year-old pacing colts and geldings. And um, a, a young horseman by the name of um, Brian Pinsky had tragically died just before that race. And an unheralded driver from Illinois stepped in by the name of Dean McGee. And the horse's name was Yankee Cruiser. And he came from an impossible looking spot at the top of the stretch to win at Woodbine in Toronto that day. And they turned down the stretch in the richest ever Canadian harness race, the 20th Pepsi North America Cup into the critical final eighth of the mile. All-American native, all-American theory. Here comes LaChance with Artesian on the outside. All-American native, Yankee Cruiser moving up. Dean McGee for the memory of Brian Pinsky. Yankee Cruiser has won the 20th Pepsi North America Cup. As a modern day announcer, uh, we're, the, we're viewed as the soundtrack of racing. So you have to try to encapsulate the story of the time period or the events of a race in about a 10 to 15 second sound bite. So I would say that was one of the most emotional uh, moments of my career. Another was a, a ding dong, knock down, drag em out battle of the pacing mares of the 1990s by the names of Shady Daisy and Swing Back this was a Breeders' Crown Final, and I had the great privilege throughout my career to call 80 Breeders' Crown Finals. And they, tra they kept trading leads incessantly through the stretch. Swing back, Shady Daisy, Shady Daisy, swing back. Finally, swing back. Scored the mild upset of Shady Daisy by a very slim margin. Swing back, and Shady Daisy are set down for the stretch drive. Swing back on the lead, and Shady Daisy comes to the outside. Shady Daisy is right up alongside her. Shady Daisy and swing back. Shady Daisy getting the late advantage. Swing back is coming back on. The Mares do over the last drive. Swing back on the inside, trying to hold off Shady Daisy by a nostril. 
but it was absolutely some of the most riveting theater that I ever had the privilege to narrate. By my own count, I've had the great privilege and excitement to call uh, over 175,000 races lifetime. Uh, soon, by my own count, it'll be approaching 200,000. Uh, but, you know, it has never been work. It's been an absolute thrill. It's a responsibility I take very seriously to be integrated into trying to meet the needs of the wagering public, the horse owners, the racetrack managements, and being, uh, you know, brought into the TV crew on a nightly basis. But it's been an absolute labor of love and a big thrill, honor, and privilege. But I do take very seriously the fact that each and every race is your legacy.